In a moment, I'll talk you through my drawing of this old, what we call, finger wharfs in Sydney Harbour. So called because they stick out like fingers into the harbour. Since Sydney is no longer such a working harbour, most of these have now been transformed into luxury harbourside apartments. But before I do that, what is the most important thing if we're going to improve drawing? And I thought of this this morning because it's what I needed in this drawing. And that is, and please don't stop the video straight away, it's worth watching the drawing demo and hearing some of the points I have to make about creating the effects that I've created in it. But what is the most important thing? The most important thing is to recognize that we don't draw when we really want to or whatever creative artistic process captures our attention and our interests and our desires, that we so often don't do it for all sorts of complex reasons. And therefore, often we can't really know whether we feel like or want to or should draw or not. And we in fact can't really trust our feelings about it. How often have I planned to draw, but when I've gone to do it, I have thought, I really don't feel like it. But what I've learned is that I need to sit down and start to draw anyway. And what 99 times out of 100 I discover is that once I start drawing, once I've overcome whatever that unrecognized resistance is that's just made me feel like not doing it, once I've overcome it, sat down, started, I feel great and I enjoy the process and all the motivation and satisfaction that I had when I planned to draw at some earlier stage or simply just desired to draw when I had the time, that suddenly all comes back and I have a great time. And for me, the fact that at the very least I need to draw to make these videos often is the only reason why I actually sit down to draw at a set time. And I know from the past that if my artistic endeavours were just left up to when I felt like doing it, it would be a whole lot less pen on paper experience for me. And I think it was about when I was at this stage of the drawing that I suddenly thought, I'm not tired, I'm not whatever, this is great. I'm enjoying this because this was a scene that I wanted to draw. It's one of many photos that I took when I went into the city to do some street sketching a few days ago. And this scene of this old wharf sticking out into Sydney Harbour with North Sydney on the other side of the harbour, I thought was a great contrast in lots of ways. I particularly like the interesting architecture of the wharf. I like the lighting, the way the wharf was darker. The side I was looking at was in shade, but not so much that it came across as really dark. I like the silhouette of the wharf, of the wharf supports with the harbour through them. And I particularly like the contrast between the close wharf and the much further away skyline of North Sydney on the other side. If we were to go along the harbour to the right, we would go under the bridge in a couple of hundred metres and then past the Opera House, another couple of hundred metres past that. So this also isn't a part of the harbour that I'm so familiar with or I've gone to too much. This was very much part of the workhorse area of Sydney Harbour back in the days when it was a very busy working harbour. So I started this drawing with this horizontal line or near horizontal line, which was the top of the wharf, and I actually messed it up. Fortunately, I don't think it's particularly obvious if you're not looking at the reference, and I don't think it's particularly obvious at the end. But I drew that strip, which was the the baseline, if you like, 
of that horizontal strip. But there are two large beams of wood that sit on top of that. And I didn't draw them in. And then because I didn't draw them in and hadn't realized at that moment that I needed to draw them in, when I went to do the superstructure of the wharf, if you like, I brought, the, I brought it all straight down to that point. And so now I couldn't put those lines in without it being really obvious. So I did make a little compromise. I think I haven't even realized at this point of the drawing. Now, as in everything, I'm trying to create the effect of what I'm seeing, not draw the exactness. And although this is a relatively simple structure in terms of the accommodation section, it would be easy to get very bogged down in all the louvres and whatnot. So I'm just trying to draw the effect. And that's a similar thing with the effect of those windows. I don't just want to blot them all out and make them look black. I want to create a sense that we are looking through them, that we are getting a sense that there is space behind which has different values of light and dark, of, of reflection of objects in there, and yet without taking too much time on it. Now I've decided to put a figure just sitting sprawled somewhat in the sun over the edge. And there's a bollard that's on the other side of the wharf. In case somebody wants to come up alongside and get tied up there. So there was quite a lot of work on these wharf supports. In Australia, we tend to use the word wharf. We don't use pier very much at all. Now, on these first ones, I'm following the reference quite carefully because I like this sort of fairly random looking spaces between them. And the silhouette effect is, I think, probably what attracted me first to this scene. And so I think it's worth trying to capture it as it is. Otherwise, I know I'll tend to space them out too evenly if I just do it without looking at the reference. So the reference helps me to become more random than I know I'm going to be otherwise. But once we move further along, where there are very few gaps, in fact, beyond making sure that I do maintain those gaps that I can see through at approximately the same place, I'm not so fussed to exactness with the reference. And I start to try and define where these supports hit the water as well. Now I think this is a scene where it's important to get fairly dark values in certain parts of it, dark values for the silhouettes of the wharf supports, dark values for the water that's got shadow being cast on it from the wharf and dark values for various parts of the apartments on top. Just looking at this now, I think, yes, my, my perspective angle for the baseline of the roof is not angled enough. It's too horizontal. It should just be pushed up another maybe three millimeters, I think would have worked nicely. And the appearance is made worse by the fact that I've lifted the top line of the roof too high. In my defense, I have to say, I am feeling a little bit ordinary this morning. I, I could have a touch of something. And I guess that just discouraged me from putting the extra effort into observing my reference as carefully as I probably normally would, which does go just to remind me of the fact that Good observation, carefully observing our reference, is actually hard work and it does take effort. And therefore, we should be prepared for that and be prepared to put it in. And it is the sort of thing that we start to neglect 
if we feel rushed or tired or whatever, distracted. I'm using a 0 0.1 millimeter pen for the wharf. And the odd thing I've done now is for the far side of the harbor, I'm actually switching pens, but I'm not going to a 0 0.05. I find them really quite scratchy. I feel like I'm trying to draw with a needle rather than a pen with anything thinner than a 0 0.01 millimeter pen. But what I've done is I've actually picked up a 0 0.3 millimeter pen to draw the far side of the harbour. Now, this is a bit unusual because normally I would use a finer pen to draw a more distant object. But this 0 0.3 millimeter pen is one that has given me many drawings of faithful service and is pretty used up and yet I can still get a line out of it and I find that it's very handy to keep pens that are substantially dried up and to use them in this sort of circumstance. So it does mean that we have to be aware of what pens are what and it's also partly why I always check how much ink is in my pens before I start to draw. But I find that this mostly dried up 0 0.3 millimeter pen gives just the amount of faintness that I want in my line to create the far side of Sydney Harbour, the North Shore of Sydney Harbour. And I know that if I were to use my 0 0.1 millimeter pen for this, even just trying to draw it lightly because it's a new pen and it's full of ink and it's releasing a lot of ink at the moment, that I will still get a heavier line than I want. Or if I try to use it lightly, it may blotch a little bit if I rest for too long in the one spot. So these skyscrapers on the far side of the harbour are also, of course, a great contrast in architecture and styling and simplicity to the wharf structure that I've already drawn. So that also makes them a nice important part of the scene. While I don't particularly enjoy drawing skyscrapers, these are far away enough that I really just have to suggest them. And if you're interested, this drawing took me just under an hour to draw in real time. And if you'd like to have a go drawing it, you'll find this reference photo on my channel community page. So why not give it a go yourself? But again, there is a difference between the buildings down on the harbour, which are therefore significantly closer, and the ones that are furthest back, which are probably twice the distance from us as those, those older buildings actually on the waterfront. And so there is a bit of a different feel in how I draw those. So now take away the tape and it's all done. G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. Look, please, let me encourage you. Don't let the fact that I don't feel like drawing right now put you off starting. It's always worth starting. And if in 5, 10 or 15 minutes you want to stop, you can. But I reckon 9 times out of 10, you'll discover that you really do have the energy and passion for continuing your drawing. But look, whatever you draw and however you draw it, make sure you have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.